Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be showing you how to deploy your Next.js application to a Linux server. So it can it can be any Linux server. You can use DigitalOcean, you can use AWS, you can use GCP, uh, Linux, anyone that you like. But I'm going to be doing this using AWS. So here I'm going to be doing this using AWS. So you can follow along if you have AWS. I'm sure the steps will be the same. When we get to the Linux server itself, it's going to be the same, but the interface might not be the same. So I have a very simple Nexus application. So don't mind this. This is just a uh, Next 14, a very simple Next 14 application. And all it does is just to display, this is my channel's name. And then uh, this is just a text. So the only reason why this is here is just for environment variable sake. I have an application it here. So if you look at this place, I have a very simple Next uh, 14 application. Um, this is the one that displays the YouTube name. This is a uh, YouTube channel name. This is just for me to show you how to uh, use environment variable uh, for your GitHub actions. And this is the text that you see. So if I go to, yeah, I think that is that. Um, this is just Tailwind classes. Doesn't matter what is here. Okay, so how are we going to do this? We are going to be deploying this to, um, to the Linux server using, in my case here, I'm using AWS. And I will be using a GitHub Actions, so so that we don't have to do this manually. So GitHub Actions is going to help us that each time we push or pull or whatever we choose to do, I'm going, it runs automatically. So I'm going to show you how to set that up. All right. So I already have this code on GitHub here, right? It's just called Deploy Next to AWS. I don't know the best uh, name to call. I think I called this uh, AWS already before uh, this became uh, what is it called? I just realized, oh, this is, this works for every every um, Linux server, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, that is that. You know, very simple bootstrap thing, nothing serious there. So how do we start? First of all, let's start with creating our AWS server. First of all, our Linux server. So let's go to AWS. Hope once you log in or whichever one you're using, I'm going to be using EC2. I'm going to be using EC2 Elastic Compute. So just go to this search bar here and type ec2 once you log in i'm not going to be taking you through the process of creating an account and all that but once you create your account just type ec2 and pick ec2 here to create your vpc once you see this all you have to do is go to, you can just scroll, scroll down and you see launch instance you see launch instance down here click on launch instance now you have to provide a name for your instance I'm just going to call it next API. Let me call it next API. Now come down. You have to pick your application and OS. I am going to pick Ubuntu or Ubuntu, whatever you call it. Um, that is what I'm most familiar with. I'm picking this. I tried picking this Amazon Linux once and it was hell for me. All right. So I'm going to stick with the free tier. I have a very simple application that I'm building. Um, that, that, that is. So I'm going to stick with the free tier. If you need more memory, if you need more storage, feel free to increase it. I've been in a situation whereby I picked, not even free, but a little one, and I was, it wasn't able to run my application. I had to increase it. So you, if you have a large application, you might find yourself in such situation. You just need to increase it. All right, so I'm going to go with the free one since it's just, you know, just a, um, for this video. Okay, so I have T2, micro, blah, blah, blah. It's free. Don't worry about it. Now... You have to create a key pair login because you might you will need it to do SSH. Obviously, you can work from the AWS provided terminal or whatever, but I like to do it from my own. So I'm going to click on create new pair. So you click on it. If you already have, if you click on this place, you will see it. But since I don't have any one, when I click on create new pair, and I'm going to pick uh, this ED25519. I prefer this and leave this as PEM. If you are going to be running uh, this on uh, something like, uh, what is it called? PowerShell, blah, blah, those kind of guys, you might use PPK. But for me, I prefer this. I'm not going to explore this since I never got to even use it at all. I always use them here. Um, yeah, so you pick this one and then you pick this and you simply cl click on create key pair. Oh, I didn't give it a name. Sorry. I'm going to call it next again next um you can reuse this anytime you like but let me just click next ed 
So I'm going to click on create key pair now. And it's created, then it downloads it. Um, we'll come back to this downloaded file because this is going to be very important for us too. It has been automatically selected here as my key pair that I'm going to be using to SSH. Look at this network. It says create security group or select existing security group. So this guy, do, do, let me check if I have any. I don't have, do I have any? I don't have any. Oh, I think I have something. But I'm going to click on create new. I just stick with this for now. And then I'm going to allow SSH traffic from uh, from anywhere. Yes, for them. Click, click on this. Allow HTTPS traffic. Allow HTTP. Now this is very very important. And most of the time when you're creating a web server, you'll be needing um, HTTPS or HTTP. So you would have to allow them. We'd we'll come back add one more thing to this for our, for our Nexus application. You wouldn't have to do that if it was just a node application. You wouldn't have to do that if you do not enable this. You would, after all your configuration, you'll be surprised that someone cannot access your application. You'll be surprised. All right, so um, that is that. Uh, I'm going to use that. Then let me move. If everything is fine. Just leave it as default. Um, you don't need to open this advanced. Everything is fine. Just leave it as default. What you now do, you come here, you see this number of instance one, just leave it like that. Just let everything be. And then you click on launch instance here on the right, launch instance. All right, so the instance has been successfully launched. Now you can, don't worry about any of this thing. What you have to do is just click on instances here. You'll see your instance. All right, so now, but you have to wait for this to change to running because this is pending right now. So I'll be back once this changes to running. Now, oh, it's already changed to running. <laughs> I'm still talking. All right, so it's running now. So that means we can do something with it. So before I do anything with it, I want to select it. Click this place here. Once you click here, you select a particular one. Some, I've selected it. Let's go down a bit. Uh, it's not working. Okay, let's go down to this. But what I want to look at is the security side. Is it security? Yeah. And now go to, um, let me see if I can shrink this a bit. Go to inbound rules. So all you have to do is when you select this, if I take it away, select this guy here, go to security and then scroll up you will see inbound rules now if you look at these inbound rules you have tcp port 80 you have 443 and 222 so you have your local host you have your um https and http then you have your ssh one more thing you need to do this is because it is a next.js application you don't have to do this if you are you know, you know it's just a node application the same thing we are doing you can actually just do it for node and deploy your node application we well, have to come here and click on uh, before the this section that says inbound rules. Click on this security group. So once you click on the uh, security rules or group, you see edit inbound rules. Now, like I've said over and over again, you need to add one thing here because in uh, for your next JS application, if it was to be just no pure no JS, you don't need that. Click on edit inbound rules. Now you go down here and click on add rule and you will leave it as custom just leave it as custom you want to add uh, a port so this is going to be the port that your node.js um, your next yes application is going to run the default port is 3000 so i'm going to say 3000 so i add this and i'm going to see i'm going to pick um, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 so anywhere and i would save the rules any port that you put there is going to be the port that your, that your next yes application is going to run on so in this case i've picked port 3000 with this in place we are ready to go so now let's go back to just go here and click on ec2 or just go to this left panel here and click on instances and then we have a single instance click on connect here and then you can see that you are able to connect in several ways you can use ec2 serial console when you um okay uh, this my account is actually not authorized to use this uh if you have you can just you know uh open one from here i'm going to use ssh clients here by uh running this on my own uh, local terminal i prefer that 
can to just do it here because I have this problem where it keeps timing out once in a while. All right, but then before we do that, remember the private key that we created that we saved. If I go to here and I go to downloads, uh, and you see this here, so it is in my downloads folder. My downloads, if I click on show in down show in folder, you can see that it is my download. So if I want to get it, all I have to do is to CD to my download folder and I'll find this there. Whatever your own is downloads to, whatever it saves to, I don't know where you are saving it to, you have to make sure that you go to that directory so that you can follow suit. Now, let me go, I have a terminal open. This is running my next JS server itself. Um, I would create a new one. I'm using window terminal preview. I really like it. And this is Git bash, obviously. So um, this is my, I print my current working directory. Uh, this is user slash if you ever that's the name I use. So I'm going to go to download. Now this is where that uh, file is. This uh, pem, uh, where is it? This pem pi, uh, that, this guy next ed dash ed dot pem is in this download folder. So if I come here now. Open your SS client, locate your private key. I know where mine is, which is next ed .pem, which I've told you to find yours. You have to copy this command so that I can give it the necessary permissions to run. So I'm going to come here. Make sure you find where yours is uh, saved and then you run this command. So I run successfully. That means I can execute this guy. How do you connect? You come here and you copy this you see this line um sorry not the example this line here you copy it this is basically your url so if you copy that you can open it in your browser i don't think anything would be there or you can open that up in your browser assume that you install something like nginx you will see it this is unreachable anyways that doesn't matter to us right now so you click here you copy copy this command and then you come here and you run it. If it connects, then it's fine. If it doesn't connect, then we need to go back and watch it again and see the steps that we miss. So I'm going to hit on enter. And yes, I'm going to enter yes. And yes, we have connected successfully. So you have connected successfully. So you have, suppose you have SSH successfully. So I'm going to clear the, the terminal. One of the things we usually do is to update the update it. So I'm going to sudo apt update. And it's going to update all these things here. But besides that, we are ready to go. The next thing that we need to do now is to go to GitHub and create an action. Then we'll come back to this here. Let's go to GitHub. Here is my GitHub account where I have my repo existing or living in you would go to your settings now that you are in your settings if you scroll down you would see action here on the side that says tools and automation you would say go to action and then you click on runner you are going to choose new self-hosted runner so you click on that. Now we are running on Linux. So you pick Linux. Yeah, in this video obviously you'll be running on Linux. Now these are the things that you need to do. Now you need to pay attention to what we are going to do here. So first of all, you would copy this line, this first one, and then you go back to your to here. Here is where you will be using it, pasting it. Now I would paste this. So one thing you know, this what this command simply does is that it's creating a folder and it's changing directory into that folder. You can change the name to whatever you like. I would leave the default. Whatever you want to call your own, you would uh, you can change it. But I will leave the default and I will hit on enter. So I have that already. Now I go back. The next command here is to download the latest package. Um, GitHub provides a tutorial guide on it. 
to click on this and then i would also uh, put the now remember if you change the name make sure that your name matches the name that you have here make sure it matches the same name that you used here all right so i'm going to hit enter again and then this guy is going to install everything and it's done then i go back to github again and then i'm going to validate the hash by also take picking this out and then i'm going to enter again uh, also remember to make sure your name matches your name that you choose matches and i'll pick this one and i enter and it says okay that means it worked out well all right then i go back here and then i need to extract the installer so i also copy this and i go here and then i paste please also make sure that the name matches don't forget i think this is the last time i will say that and i enter all right so um let me see no, not this okay so i'll, I'll finish uh, extracting installer i now need to configure the runner and uh, yeah so what i have to do is to copy this guy one more time and then i will come here and paste it uh, you can see this one connects let me take this out connects my github account and the repo and everything enter and boom this um guy is connected he's going to ask me what name i would like to call it i'm going to hit on default and then um enter the name of the runner so he's, he's picking my ip my server uh, private ip and i can just give it a name and say next here i'm going to give it a name and say next and then he says oh self-hosted linux um 64 architecture yes everything just enter to skip i don't care okay so what is the name of the works folder i want to use? you can use whatever you want to use the default that is going to be is underscore work and that's what i'm going to use you can change it to whatever you like and i'll pick that and it's saved so if i do ls now i will see or uh, where is it yeah you see some bunch of uh things here that have been um added now with this alone you can if you go back here you can just pick this guy and run it you can just pick this guy here and see each time you want to do let me clear this each time you want to the action to run you then come and run the slash run or let me let me show that again so if you look at this what is it this command here you want to run it you just pull this guy and then this runs so each time you want to do this you have to run it manually and then this guy is listening for jobs and then you are waiting but for me i don't have that i can't do it neither do i think you should do it if you would have to do this manually what's the point of adding these github actions what's the point of adding this runner if you have to come here each time you push something and do this so for me i like to let this run in the background so how do we do that let me terminate this guy so since we don't want to do it ourselves let me clear this we would want to run it in the background so let me list these guys again you see this svc here this is what the tool will be using to run it in the background so let's quickly install it so i'm going to say sudo dot svc dot sh install so when once we install this package then we need to start it and then this simply means that run in the background automatically so it's going to be checking anytime we push so the branch that we are going to set it's automatically going to run itself so let's start it so that it runs in the background so we start and it's running you can see it's active it's running it is running yeah so we don't need to do the slash run the sh each time so this runs in the background and I'm, i'll clear this up now if i go back to my github if i go back to github i have, I have all this in set um this will be used in our yam file don't worry about it uh okay i have all this in set now if i go back to runners you can see this guy say it is i do because obviously it's doing nothing it is i do this is the name i choose next okay so now we have this one um set up right now and uh, it's fine so what do we need to do next in my code if i go to my code base i have a secret 
and any uh, boring reason that I have my many two file. You might have many more. The only reason why I added this is just to demonstrate how to do this. So if you go to my page dot here, I have this H1 where I'm reading my short hand for YouTube channel name. And if you go to the browser, you find it. This is what is showing here. Um, I just want to show how to do this. How would you pass that to your runner? If you go back to your uh, code now, I'm sorry, to GitHub. Where is GitHub? Is this where is it GitHub? Yeah, okay. So just click on settings. So once you get to settings, scroll down to secrets and variables under security. Go to secrets and variables. So click on it. And what secret is that? It's going to be for action. So click on actions. And then scroll down and say new repository secret and click on it. All right, so what is the name? Let's call it um, next underscore env underscore file. Whatever you choose to call it doesn't matter. Make sure you remember it. And you can just copy all your environment variables. So you have many more. You can just copy all of them and just paste it here. Just remember this name, whatever you call it. We are going to be using it in our workflows. So and then I'll click add secret. Okay, so I have added uh, a secret here that we'll be using our workflows. So once we have added this one here, one secret, I just did like, like I said, just to show you how you would do it. But once you've added that, then we need to create our workflows. You can do it in two ways. You can just go back here and click on this tab, actions at the top here, actions. You can go here and you can just search for CI. Feed filters, it should, it doesn't filter. Okay, let's scroll down and look for go to CI continuous integration right here. And you see Node.js. So you can just click on this to configure. So you can just click configure. And then you have um, this GitHub workflows folder created for you. For me, I like to do it myself but you know, for the sake of this let us look at what we have here so we have right here a um this yam file and it says sorry if i don't pronounce that name correct i don't i've never checked how to pronounce that but that y a m l anyways it says node continuous integration forever whenever we push i don't think i need to explain this but this is what it's doing each time we push or when we make a pull request we want this to run but for me, I don't want it to be where we make a pull request. But anyways, I'm going to put what we need. I just want to explain this. And this is the job we are building. We are running on Ubuntu latest. No, we are going to change this to be self-hosted. That's one thing you need to do. It should be self-hosted. Because we are running. Remember when we we're creating our runner, we picked that. So this is going to be self-hosted. And then, depending on the versions of Node.js that you have, you can leave this. I have. Uh, next 14 runs from 18 2017 going up i think so i'm going to remove these guys and just leave uh, 18 and then you have some series of things here that you might need um, you have this guy that is supposed to um, do clean install for you here let me, let me start from here you have steps okay so you have actions you want to get the node version and all that uh you, you are caching npm you maybe don't want to keep installing each time you are doing um, npm um, clean install so each time this runs you want a fresh install you are doing that and then you are running npm run build if it is uh if, if it is present in the code and then npm test if it is present i don't think there's anything just here i'm going to remove this guy here now this is what we have at the moment and with this um even though this is not all but i don't want to finish my editing here I want to take it down to my uh, VS Code here. So what I'm going to do is just just go with me. We are going to say that we are probably done with the whole thing, and we are going to say commit changes. So I'm going to click on commit changes, and yeah, just I'm just going to say yeah, create this, and that's all. You can also just create a branch and make this run directly to you what you have here in your um, server from AWS. Is it but no, I don't want to do that. I want to do the configuration myself and then get that to run.
So I'm going to just say commit to me indirectly, don't create a branch. And we'll get this. Alright, so we now have this. We now have this git all workflows. Um, now I'm going to go back here and I need to I think I'll terminate this guy. I'll please clear this and I will just pull. So I'm going to say git pull. So I can pull that into my code base. And now you can see it has been added. And then if I open my code base, I would have a workflow here. Yes, this is it. Now, if you don't understand how this works, I would recommend you watch uh, one or two YouTube tutorials to understand it. So this is GitHub workflow, uh, GitHub folder. This is workflows. And then this is the, the node whatever in it you can change the name to maybe deployment whatever you like i'm just going to leave it like this and i will just change this first of all to cicd now i'm not going to spend all the whole time rewriting these things so i'll just um get to it okay so i've written a very simple one a simple uh, code here i'm going to take out i think i have a pull request i don't need this is when they push so i want this to run now keep one thing in mind which is that you don't need to keep saying that run, that run. You can chain multiple run command, uh, whatever. So, for example, I can do something like this and chain multiple command like this with this pipe, and I can run this in two guys. So, with that, I can actually run these two lines like this as one. It's not saying that run, that run that I have here. So, yeah, I can just say that run once, and then with this pipe here. I can pass the two commands that I want to run, and then they run after this runs this run. So it doesn't have to be like this. But I'm going to leave it like this for now. We'll be back. We might have to use it um, soonest. But what we have right now is that we are saying that on push to the branch, which is main, you can pass any branch that you want here. Yeah? Then this is, remember, it is self hosted. We are running from uh, version 18, whatever. And then we would have our npm. There and then we are seeing a uh, clean install. We are creating uh, a file called .env. And now here is very important. We are passing the content of next env file, which is what we created in our secret. So Echo is basically going to take whatever we pass and speed it out to the terminal, or whatever they call it. So if I go for here, if I go to here and I say Echo, and I say Go, I just going to say Go. So if I have a file, for example, and I see echo go and I redirect it to let's say um t uh, I see go.txt. Now we don't see anything, but if I was to say cat go.txt, you see the content, which is go. So whatever is inside this my echo was redirected and uh, added inside here. So that is what we are doing basically. I need to remove that file now. Uh, I just do this. I don't care whatever is going to happen. And just TXT and bye bye to it. Let me clear this guy up. Now that is what we are basically doing here. So we are saying echo, whatever you find, all the environment variables that we have added here, redirect them and put them inside this. And this should be sorry, MV. Sorry. All right. And once we do that, then we say npm run build if it is present. That is it, and we are done. So we now need to push and see if this would run, first of all. So let me add, give me a minute, let me just add everything, git add, everything that I have, the git commit. See, what is this, the feature? And I will push it. Oh, damn, I forgot to remove the environment variable. Please don't forget to do that. I think that, let me see. I already committed that. So I'm just going to see if that is already there. So now I need to remove it. It's already there. So I need to say git reset dash dash off head one. So I'm going to reset, reset the last commit. And I'm also going to say git reset dot env. Um, yeah. So I've reset that. And uh, I'm going to add everything. Now I've I need to add this to the staging area. Git add. Okay, so I'm going to say git status so that I know what I'm being com I'm committing. So if you look at what I'm committing, you see that my .env is no longer there. So yeah, it's a mistake, but you know, in case you do that, uh, you make this mistake, you can just do what I just did right now to remove the file that you don't want to commit. And I'm going to say git commit now this time around. Yeah. 
and then git push. So once I push, uh, it should run. So it's, it's going to run if I go to here. Uh, I wonder I won't see it because it's running in the background. But let me do ls now. Oh, it is timed out. Okay. Let me go back SSH back into it. And I'm going to say cd action. Uh, let me clear ls. Just look at what we have now. By the time we are done running, we now have our underscore work directory. That's where our work will be. But let's go back to this particular GitHub account. Okay, we are still there. Let me leave this. Let me go to actions on the tab here. You can see that it is running. You can see it is running. And you can actually click on it to see what is going on. And you can see uh, if, you, if you click, it's building. If I, can I click on this? And it has, is is running npm clean install. It's going to run it. You're going to create an environment variable, echo this, build, whatever, whatever. I'll be back once it's done. So it is done. If you look at this very well, you see that our actions, everything has run. Set up the job, run the actions, use node 18, upwards, run npm ci, which is a clean install. And all these things are successfully run. So if I if I go back now to actions, <coughs> sorry about that. You see that uh, it has run successfully. All right. Now if I go back to the code, um, this was deployment. Um, I think this is where we go. Yeah, uh, actions. Now if I see, let me ls. I cd into the work. Remember, this is where our things will be. And I do ls again. Uh, this is our application here. Is it here? So let me go into it. CD deploy. I need to also do CD deploy one more time. Now, if I do LS, you see all our files and everything is here. Now, <coughs> you're not seeing the environment variable. Let me do LS actually. Now you will see the environment variable here that we have. So um, if I cut it, if I say cut dot env, you see the YT channel is that we have so we read that from our github um from our github secrets i don't want to go, go back to that but this particular line here that is what passed that um after creating it here we then echoed whatever we have and redirected it into this particular file then we build everything is good if i say ls again uh we have built this file already everything is there now back in home, if I print the current working directory, this is like home slash Ubuntu. Let's install Node.js and npm. Okay, so for me, I like to install Node using NVM, and to install NVM, we use this command here. I'm going to place this in the in this video description. So I'm installing that NVM using this. I'm going to hit enter. Now that is done, you would have to run this command here. So just copy this very very important and then i'll paste it and yeah that is it the next thing you should do is to type source so i can spell source anymore source and this sign and then slash dot bash rc this is equivalent to you closing the terminal and then opening it but i don't have that luxury hit enter and that is that now i want to use nvm to install node <coughs> so i'm going to say nvm sorry nvm install <coughs> 0.17.2 let me just 18.0 let's see okay now it is done installing so in order for my uh for me to use it i have to say nvm use 18.17.0 now i am using node 18 so this is how I use it. You can use NVM to install whatever version that you like of Node. And then I have NPM already coming with Node NPM 9.6.7. So you can say Node-V now, and you have your Node version. You can say NPM-V, and you have your NPM version. So remember that my, that my stuff is already built. So if I say CD actions, uh, that's for work, and CD, uh, I think deploy to whatever, and deploy to so now I already built everything. Oh, what did I type? If I say npm run thing start, you see my application has started. You can see 
you can see my application has started successfully. Use this um, kill it. What we now need to do is that obviously you don't want to do this by yourself like this. You don't want to do this. You don't want to come and run npm run star. Although you can actually have it in the if I go back here, where is it? I can actually add the command here to run it each time to start the server each time. But I would prefer to do to start the server using PM2, a node process manager. That PM2 would help me in the case of a server crash, it will automatically restart. Um, to use PM2, you are going to install that. So I'm going to go to the home directory by just saying CD and I will say PM, npm install dash g, which is global PM2. So I'm installing PM2. Okay, PM2 is done installing. You can run where is PM2. So find where it is installed. It shows you that it was installed successfully here. So now that means I can start my application using PM2. See, we have to go back to the, the where our project is. So I'm going to go back to underscore work, deployment, deployment, deployment. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to paste the command that I use for PM2 to start a Nexus application. Now, have this, um, let me explain what this means. This is simply saying PM2 start npm. This dash n is the same thing as dash name. You can just change that to dash name or dash n, whatever you like. And then this here is simply the name that you want to call the application. This is important for you because you would want to use this name to do referencing whenever you want to do something. Maybe you want to restart it or something like that. So I can just call this next one more time and then dash dash start. Now here I'm providing a port. I'm saying that this should be on run on port 3000, which is dash P port 3000. You don't have to do that if you have only a simple application and it is running on, um, on port 3000 already. Um, like by default, it runs on port 3000, so you don't have to specify this. But if you have multiple and you need to specify that, then you just have to put a space, dash, dash, dash P, and maybe the port, maybe 4000 or 5000, whatever you want. But in this case now, I'm running on the default port, which is 3000, so I don't need to specify port. And with that, we are good to go. So if I hit enter now, what is the mistake? Let me see, PM2 logs. This okay, so it's running. I was expecting to see like uh, it in a tabular form. So when I said PM2 logs, this is what you used to see the log. So now I can go out of this. I can just close this, and it's still running in the background. Now I can say call localhost 3000, and when we should be able to see it. So yeah, this is the content of my Nesdis application. Now, before I proceed, I just want to take this moment to see. If you are if you watched up to this point please if you have not subscribed to the channel subscribe like share comment tell me what you think help more youtube channels like mine to grow and reach more people all right so straight back to the video now if i go to that point you can see that your application is running i can see pm2 logs one more time to see whatever is there it's still uh, it's still up now uh, i'm not going to run these guys but i'll just show you if you need to stop it at for any reason you just say pm2 stop if you need to delete it delete the you but you have to provide the name which is either e or the i um or the what is it called the id that was associated with it but in this case i can just provide the the name for mine is next and i will stop it from running and if i need to delete it i have to say pm2 delete uh what is it called delete next next and it will be deleted now if i also want to clear all this that i see here i just have to say pm2 flush and I will clear everything that, that is in the logs. And that is that. But now, what I don't want to do is to come here right in this uh, Linux environment to be doing this. I want it to be done automatically. I want each time I push any code for it to run and for it to be deployed automatically. And then also the server to restart automatically. I don't want to come here to do it myself. So let's go back to uh, VS Code. And on this line here, after building, we want to tell it to restart. Now, I have had a problem in the past whereby um, it was saying PM2 was not installed. So what I do these days is that I also install PM2 right from here, so I to avoid any problem of PM2 not being installed. Now, with this run command here, we can 
we don't actually have to keep saying run, run, run like this. We can add a pipe and add multiple commands at once. So, for example, I can remove this and add pipe and then go down and add this command. So, what this is going to do is, let me show you. So, what this is going to do is, for all the commands that I add after adding I add this pipe, they are going to run in one after the other. So, right now, I'm saying view if it is present. Now, after building, I also want to say npm i dash g, which is installed globally, pm2. So, I want you to install pm2. Now, after installing PM2, I want it to restart the server. I already have the application started, if you remember. So now I need it to restart. So I'm going to say PM2 restart. Now I have to provide the name of which of them I want to restart. And the name is simply next, if you remember. So this is how you restart uh, with PM2. So what this is going to do is after it's done with all these things here, then it's simply build, installs PM2 again, and then restart. Like I said, you don't need this part, but I ran into problems where it keeps saying that that was not installed. So if we save now and we push this back, all this is going to run at once. Remember, this name must match what you have in your environment. So let's quickly do that. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to say git. And since it's just a single file, so I'm going to add shell, which is um, automatic, automatic restart or whatever. So I want to restart it immediately. PM2. So I'm going to push and then I restart. Let me refresh this. It's running. Now, if, if we didn't add that, after this is done running and it builds, the server doesn't start. So, assuming that uh, it's a production application, for example, when, when this runs, this pipeline finished running, it wouldn't be able to, it wouldn't start. So, you would have something like uh, maybe 501 or whatever, or 502. I think that is 502 when you have ng next to it. Let's wait for this to run. It's already running again. If I click on it, um, if I go by, let me see. Uh, so it's already it's building already. It has passed all these sides. It's building. Uh, once it's done. Uh, Namespace, I think I'm seeing that. something like I think the build failed. Something something went wrong. The build failed. Let's find out. So after it says no build cache found. Then after building, what was the problem? Um we said UUID some I don't understand this but uh update the EMV to update uh, this is supposed to be from pm2 i guess so um yeah i can see that next build successfully here but then uh, we have this error process or namespace next not found process or namespace next not found all right so i think let's go look at this place i thought we have um i thought the name i gave this guy was next so pm2 logs let me see the logs again um okay, this is not going to help me what i'm going to do is I, I will stop this pm2 stop i think i called it next right oh it's true it's it's not actually next what did i call it because this error we have here process on instance is not found is the same error that we have here the same error that we have here so what did i call it I don't know. Let me say PM2 list. This is going to give me the list of other things that is running. Ah, I, what did I call it? I'm seeing dash A here. I thought I called it next. Why am I seeing dash A? Okay, so I need to stop it and call it next. And then I need to make my workflow to rerun like a parameter, like maybe passing some arguments. That's the dash there. So I'm going to say PM2 stop zero. So ID, yeah, when it stops that, you see status is stopped. Now, if you do that stuff again, it's not going to work. You say call localhost 3000, it's not going to work. So now I need to delete it. So I'm going to say PM2 delete zero. Okay, and I'll just clear. So this was what I was expecting in the beginning when I ran that. I'm quite surprised. So I'm going to say, let me. Go back hopefully let me locate the command 
that need to, yeah so this was to come out so i oh i forgot to add dash dash name instead of dash name it's supposed to be dash dash name so here so it's supposed to be pm to start npm dash dash name so this this was the mistake okay so let's go again now yeah, you see the name is next now you see it here this was what i was expecting earlier that made me think that that was uh there was an error so this is it now if we rerun the workflow it should automatically work right now okay so can i restart the workflow right from here yeah i can do that so rerun job so i'm going to see we run the failed one right now we run so i'm expecting this to work um it's queued waiting for pending what do you mean by waiting for that? what happened i'm seeing an error already what happened again what happened um give me a minute <laughs> PM to restart next. Maybe I needed to. Maybe I need to just push it. Up. I don't know. But I know I've added. PM to, yeah, it restarted here. So why is it not? Why did it fail? Uh, why did it fail? I don't know. Okay, what I'm going to do is just I will just push a new one and let it be. So I need to just find something here and you know. So what I'm going to do is I'll take this one out. And I'll add a pipe on the other side that will make them run together. So I'm just gonna add a pipe here, push this guy down. Okay. Git speaks. So this is basically gonna have um a new a new one. I don't know. I don't have the time to keep checking why that guy didn't run. Yeah, so he's, oh, it totally ran successful. Can you imagine? When it, oh damn, it ran and it was successful. But I don't know why I was seeing the error. I think it was the previous one that I was still looking at. Because this one, if I click on it, it ran, I says job completed. Damn, now I have to, okay, let's just wait for this to, should I wait? I don't know. Okay, why we're waiting for this to run? um basically that will be the end for this video once this guy finishes running but this even though this is done you still cannot access this application for example if you take the ip if i go to uh, aws right now and i take this if i try to access this application right from here um let's just see together uh obviously you are not going to be able to access it because right now it's still close to the outside world so for you to be able to access it outside here you would then be needing to come okay i think it's done it's done yeah i'm, I'm not going to look into it um it's done automatically restart the server so if i just go back right now and i say call give me a minute local host 3000 it should work yeah why well, it works fine all right then um so what i was saying that you still don't have access to the uh, outside world so you would need to use a reverse proxy, Nginx or Apache, anyone you like. But that, that is not covered in this video. If you would like to see me do it, show you how to connect Nginx so that I can be able to access your application here with this. And from for anybody to be able to access it, then comment down in the video that you want me to do that. And I would do a video for that. Meanwhile, this is just for you to deploy. So if you'd like to see that, fine, just write it in the comment. If I see enough comment, I'll put up a video how to do that all right then uh please subscribe to the channel like share and comment with your thoughts i will see you in the next one <music>